Ladies and gentlemen, our chief guest really needs no introduction. Dr. Bantek Singh Adhavalya is the deputy chairperson of the Planning Commission of India and has been a key figure in India's economic reforms from the mid-1980s onwards. Joining the government in 1979, as economic advisor in the Ministry of Finance, he held a series of senior positions before taking up his current assignment. He's written on various aspects of development economics, including Indian economic policy, and is a much sought after speaker at national and international fora. May I request Dr. Aluvalia to please address this illustrious gathering. Mr. Raj Vatikuti and Padma Vatikuti, Dr. Mani Menon, Dr. Naresh Trehan, other dignitaries on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to be invited to inaugurate this conference. You know, I must say that in my job, I'm frequently invited to inaugurate conferences and I'm very aware that I know much less uh, about the subject than most of the people I'm addressing. But this one is really unique because 99% of what I know about robotic surgery was actually picked up during Mani Menon's lecture, which I was able to hear most of. So this is one of the most imbalanced uh, uh, occasions for me to speak. I will therefore uh, limit myself to making a few points, especially because this conference is also quite unique in the brevity of the addresses in the inaugural function. Those of you who have attended Indian conferences know most inaugural functions are full of very, very long addresses. Uh, they've given me a little more time than they've given to everyone else, but I don't want to speak for more than the time allotted. <clears throat> so first, and most important, I want to join in the tribute that was paid to Raj and Padma Vatikuti. Uh, what they're doing is actually bringing uh, now to India uh, a technology that is very new, uh, and it requires someone who has both the vision and the generosity uh, to make that possible. Uh, so I think I entirely agree with what was said by the previous speaker, that this is an example of not just making history, uh, but making history in a way that touches the lives of ordinary people. So thank you very much. Second, uh, it's a pleasure to hear Mani Menon, about whom I've heard a lot from Naresh. Uh, and I can see from the film and the various uh, comments that have been made that we do look on the threshold of making an important injection of medical technology uh, into common, well hopefully what will become at least commoner practice and ultimately much broader uh, use in India. <clears throat> you know, I think one of the things that uh, people in government always say, and I think it's very true, uh, when dealing with conferences that are related to health or medical issues, is that India has, is one of those unique situations where uh, we have the double burden of disease. I mean, the, this is still a very poor country. And certainly for the bottom 50% or so, uh, income levels are so low, health conditions are so difficult, that they're actually coping with all the problems of disease uh, at a fairly low level in terms of technology, but which can actually be quite damaging to health. On the other hand, the country is also getting richer, and so at the other end of the spectrum, we have people A, living longer, B, a little bit more able to afford medicine, and C, very aware of what is now possible. So a demand is generated uh, for actually getting much better treatment. This is a, quite a tension point for the government of India in the sense that it's virtually, it's very difficult to decide what are the things that we should be tackling first. And usually uh, people would say that as far as public expenditure is concerned, a lot more of it needs to be directed to the primary health care area and also the preventive health care and public health because in terms of cost effectiveness, given the resources are scarce, that's a priority. So in a way, it's in the non-government sector, and of course, uh, helped by uh, private generosity, uh, that a lot of the more modern uh, systems of medicine will come in. In addition, the government also has uh, its uh, flagship high-end super specialty hospitals, 
They have their own problems, uh, but they are much closer uh, to the cutting edge, and they too would need to be doing a lot more in this area. So it's a, it's a very uh, diverse sort of uh, a challenge that uh, we face in India. And I think uh, nothing illustrates this best than my morning's exposure to issues that are related to healthcare. Uh, because I opened the newspaper uh, to see the headline, India free of polio, because we've not had a single case of polio reported in the last year. And, and a very powerful uh, device, i.e. a plastic bottle from which you can dispense little drops, featured loudly, I mean pro uh, prominently in the paper. And now I've had the pleasure of uh, looking at a uh, much higher end uh, of technology. Uh, so really, that, that's the contrast. Uh, We've, we've got to, in India, we've got to be making progress in both areas. So I'm, and, I, and I think the government has to be present all across the spectrum. Uh, but I think at the higher end, higher expense area, it's inevitable that a much larger role uh, will have to be played by the private sector and, of course, supported by philanthropy wherever that's possible. Uh, I think I'm now running out of the time allotted to me. So I just want to close with uh, one, one comment, uh, which I shared with Dr. Menon uh, when he was sitting there, that, you know, thinking of myself as a prospective patient, and I'm too old to actually be a practitioner, I'd love to have thought of myself in that connection. You know, what worry, what I think is interesting is we should invent a different word from ro robotic surgery. Because I think the image, I think there were some references to people are a little nervous. I think the use of the term robotic surgery here probably derives quite correctly from uh, handling of nuclear plants where they used to have robotic arms. Uh, I mean, you, you know, everybody's seen these things, a huge, big, fat, thick glass wall and somebody moving around on an arm or the other end replicating what you're doing. But I think robotic surgery looks a little bit like, I don't know, CP3O or somebody wearing a, a coat and you're, you're sort of left to the devices of, a, of an artificially intelligent machine. And since what we are seeing is really more like you, but the, the surgeon being assisted by whatever, ICT, uh, robotic arms, this, that, and the other, uh, I think, uh, I wish we invent a somewhat different term from robotic surgery. You might find that some of the personal sort of uh, doubts that people have would immediately be, be reduced. And actually, I think the point that uh, Naresh made is also very important. I mean, we saw in the film a surgeon sitting 10 feet away from wherever the patient uh, was being operated. There's no reason why they couldn't be uh, several thousand miles away, certainly several hundred miles away. And I wonder whether, uh, in the, in, particularly in the Indian environment, <clears throat> there may be situations where it would be possible to do uh, remote surgery. Uh, because it seems to me that uh, the degree of care that a surgeon could give, I mean, assuming that the two bits of the equipment uh, are separable and replicable, it would be possible for people uh, in different parts of the country uh, to be sort of treated by the surgeon of their choice. And that might, might be quite an interesting thing to think about in the future. But uh, with these words, let me now close. Thank you, Naresh, for inviting me. Thank you, Mr. and Ms. Vatikuti, for everything you're doing, and all the very distinguished doctors present on the dais and those in the audience. Thank you. <laughs>